Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Value FC Fan Zone Podcast. I'm Sam Isles. And I'm Jack Ellis. And each episode we'll be talking to our next Leeds United player or manager about their time at the club. Our guests are chosen by you, our followers and listeners, who get the chance to choose who we are joined by by voting in a poll on our LUFC Fan Zone Instagram story. We're delighted to announce that today's episode is sponsored by luxury watch brand and the official timing partner of Leeds United, Louis Arad. The company was founded in 1931 in Switzerland and they have been an official partner with Leeds United for the last four years. As this season is Leeds' centenary year, Louis Arad have created a special limited edition watch to celebrate 100 years of Leeds United. This celebratory watch is limited to just 100 pieces and every piece is made precisely by hand. The watch uses the same automatic chronograph found in brands such as Tag Heuer and Breitling and their limited centenary piece has a special dial made using fragments of brick from the Place Tunnel Ellen Road, allowing you to wear a very unique piece of Leeds United history on your wrist. The watch is available on the official Leeds United website and the online club shop, as well as on Louis Arad's Instagram page, at Louis Arad Official, and their website, www.lewisarad.com, along with the rest of their luxury watches. But back to the show. And this week's poll showed that over 58% of you wanted a former player who featured in the Champions League for Leeds United rather than a member of Leeds' 1992 Division 1 winning side. All of our episodes can be found on our LUFC Fans on YouTube channel, as well as Spotify and Apple Podcast. And last episode, we were with former Carpy striker Jerry Mbakagu, who never actually played for the club but was strongly linked to Leeds in 2018. And we spoke to him about how transfers happen in modern day football and why he switched to Ellen Road didn't happen. This week, we're with a former France international midfielder who played for Leeds in their most recent glory era and became Leeds' record signing after arriving from French side Lens for 7.2 million in the year 2000. It's all academic, it is a free kick. Arsenal still have 11 on the pitch. Ian Hart, the last Premiership Leeds player to score in the Premiership apart from Smith and Baduka. But this is Dakar, it's given in. And Olivier Dakar, it's taken a deflection to open the game up here. But it's 1-0 Leeds United. That's right. Today we're with Olivier Decor. Thank you so much for joining us, Olivier. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. I know we're obviously planning to talk to you about your time at Leeds United, but the club and the rest of the Championship and Premier League well, resumed yesterday and, and will continue over the next few weeks. Are you excited to see a return for English football? Yeah, you know what's happened. You know, I think it's not in England, but everywhere in the world. You know, with this virus, it's uh, some things uh, unpredictable. And uh, but uh, glad the football came back this week, and uh, I'm sure uh, many people are very happy to see some some football on TV. And maybe you now, at this time, we 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 are not allowed to go to the stadium, but soon. I think uh, all the fans will uh, will come back to to the stadium. Have you been watching any football yourself, Olivia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch. Uh, I think it was uh, Manchester City against Arsenal. Yeah. Wednesday, but you know, it's uh, for me. I don't like to see games without fans. For me, it's no sense because uh, you know it's motivation when you've got a big when we when you've got stadium with fans. It's something uh, unbe- unbelievable, and it's like uh, you have to make a cake, but without any cream, without any any fruits, it looks like. Ugh. Yeah, it's not the same, is it? Uh, no, so... it's not. It's not. It's not the same. No, definitely not. Uh, so, how often do you follow Leeds nowadays? Do you do you still manage to watch any of our games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow every week. I know what what they're doing because I. I follow them in social media. Do you yeah, think we'll yeah, get promoted? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say anything because last year I was a little bit disappointed, and I really think we will go. Uh, we will, you know. I speak like we will. I really think uh, Leeds will be in. Uh, you know, will be promoted, and at the end, it was. Uh, I was a little bit disgusting. That's the reason I don't want to to say anything. <laughs> I I prefer to have a a, a good sur- a good surprise because now we cannot two for two seasons you are in the top of the league all year and you not go to the premier to the premier league it will it will be bad. Yeah. 
And like we said, the, the focal point of this podcast is going to be talking about your time at Leeds United. But it would be great if we could start from the beginning of your career, if that's OK with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. No problem. Yeah, and you started your professional career in France, obviously, with Strasbourg. And you signed yeah. your first professional contract in 1992 when you were just 18. What was it yeah. like to achieve every young player's dream and turn into a professional player? Yeah, but it was like, uh, it's, it's never happened like that because, uh, especially at this time, we didn't, in France, we, we didn't have so much young player, uh, you know, start at, at this age because uh, uh, I was, maybe we were uh, three players, 18 playing national team was in playing uh, in first division, but to sign, you know, to sign professional sometimes, it's not because you will sign a prof professional contract, then you will have success because you've got many players. You can have some talent when you're young and when you're grown up because so many expectations, you not, you not come, uh, you not become a big players, but usually I can, you know, when you see James Milner, when he had 16, you can feel he will have a great, he will have a, a great career. But many yeah. players, like uh, even all the, the, the best players, they start at 16, 17. You know, the yeah. talents, when you've got the talents after, you, you need just to additional the work to have success. Because talents, it's not enough. But it was it was crazy because when you play, you not think about ah, oh, I'm 18. Now I sign professional. You you want you want to have more. Yeah, I want to now. I am in Strasbourg, but I want to to go to the big clubs. Yeah, and then one year later in 1993, you made your first professional appearance in League One. What, what was it like to walk onto the pitch as a professional player for the first time? Yeah, but I was uh, normally, <laughs> normally, I should start maybe one year, nearly, nearly two years before to start in first division. And uh, one year before to start in the first division. That's the reason I was excited, but I was, uh, because I had a, I, I had a red card in, uh, in the reserve games. And the coach at this time, he banned me for, for the first time, for the first team for six months. He said, I don't want to see you with the, the first team because I had a fight. So you spent your first six years of your career in France with Strasbourg. However, in 1998, yeah. you made the switch to England with Everton. What was your first impression of English football and how did it differ from the football you played in France? Yeah, but I, I always I always wanted to go to to England to play football, always, and uh, I was happy. But I, I I because many when you you when you're young and they ask you where do you want to play, on me I always wanted to go to England because the fighting spirit, and when you made the tackle, you know like people, applaud you. And it's something rare in France. It's not like that, you know. It's uh, it's not like that. And in England, you've got the passion, the fans. Are... I think it's. Um, uh, I won't. Yeah, it's not. It's not like in South American, but uh, you can feel it because all the stadiums are always uh, many people at the stadiums. They start to sing, and it's a. Uh, the atmosphere in England is unbelievable. Although you only spent one season at Goodison Park, the fans really took to you and you yeah. became quite a popular figure amongst the Everton fans. How, how did you find your time there? Yeah, I love I love my my, my time because it, I, w I wanted to, to come in England, to play in England, and after it was a rock up, it was a big signing, you know, many expectations when it's like that. But I enjoy. I, I had, I had many yellow cards. That was, you know, a little bit. Uh, it was a little bit because after I had, uh, even when I didn't touch nobody, the referee used to give me a yellow card for nothing. 
but if not it was a uh, you know what is is very strange i take I take a red card against Leeds United. <laughs> 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 and, you know, it's, it's just, I think, I don't know, because after that, I, I I think about that. I said it was maybe a sign. And I didn't want to come back in France. That is the truth. But, you know, the um, Everton has a, a, a problem with money. And they have to sell uh, to sell me to, to have uh, money back. That's the reason to... Uh, uh, I went to I went back to France, but uh, I even when I start with Lance, I said I will do one year, and I will come back in England for sure. In the French newspaper, you said that you wanted to make yeah. a switch away from Everton at the end of the season. Did you think that was a mistake yeah. to publicly state your desire to leave, or did you think the Everton fans took the comments the wrong way? No, 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 because I didn't want to go to go back in France. That's for sure. It was a uh, Sometimes in France, when you said some things, and uh, I remember I said some things in England. Uh, when I was in Leeds, I said something because I, I remember I said, yeah, for me, because it was with the team we had, like, uh, because we had a very, very good team when I was in Leeds. And I said, it's a disgrace to be at this, at this position with the player we've got. We should be on the top three. But if you see, I said that. It was not a bad comment because we had so much quality on the on the team. It was a post positive comment. But if you start to translate, it can be very bad because in yeah. that's that's happened to many French players or foreigner players. When you said something in your country, he came back in England, like in the news, in the Sun or News of the World or yeah. the paper like that. He came back like explosion sensational things and it was not a sensational things if you start to to read it's uh if you you have a very good team you cannot be at at this position it's some things it's something it's not a, a lie but after i never honestly i never i never read newspaper i never i i really don't care about uh, newspaper comments on if you like me, you, you like me, and you can boo me on the pitch. I know when you will when you will boo me. Yeah. I know I will be good. You know, I I remember when I came back in uh, Goodison and and I had a great time in in Goodison in Everton. Honestly, it was a very very good time. It was my first experience abroad, and uh, it was good. And when I when we came back with Leeds. At Everton, some fans boo me on I score and I just said, uh, shh, shh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, but because I was like, but at, at, the, at the end, my last game, you know, it's, it's, it's always a story. My last game in England, when I was uh, on loan in Fulham for four months, it was against Everton. And you can see all the fans from Everton start to sing my my name my song and it was for me I, I i had you know like nearly cry i was emotional because it was for me it was my last game i in, in my career and i play against my my old team was a sign you know it was a good thing and then like you said when you left everton you returned to france with lens and although you only made 26 appearances for them you caught the eye of leeds and the club brought you back to England just before the 2000-2001 season. When was yeah. when were you first aware that Leeds wanted to bring you back to England and when no, the no, interest but, started? Yeah, but I had a, I had a lot of clubs. I had a, because uh, in Europe, in uh, UEFA, like Leeds, in UEFA, in UEFA Cup, we went to semi-final and we lost against uh, Arsenal and Leeds lost against uh, Galatasaray. It was the same year and uh, I did the uh, uh, last six months, a fantastic last six months. And I had many, many clubs wanted to buy me. But um, when I meet, you know, the the Leeds people on, I can feel because the, the, the team was young, talented. And uh, I, I thought we can have a... Uh, 
like Manchester United with the the generation of 92, 90. and I I really think with uh, all the young players we had in Leeds, we can have for for six or seven years, we can do, we could dominate the football in England. That's the reason I signed there. I wanted to like to make a story, not to make a story, but to have a a great uh, road with uh, with Leeds United. That's the reason. When I signed, I signed four on after five years. I wanted to stay in Leeds for uh, that. When I came to Leeds, I bought a house straight yeah. away. I bought a house because I wanted to, I wanted to stay there with my family. How did you initially feel about returning back to England after such a short time in France? Would you have liked no, no. to play a bit longer in France, or did you want to return? No, 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 no. I want. I know. I wanted to come back in England. That's even when I signed because uh, I, I. What is very important for me is relation, relationship, and uh, I love the the chairman of France. He's a very great man, and I give me and I give I give him my words, and because my my wife was pregnant too, and uh, she wanted to to come back in. I said, okay, we go to to we come back to to France because Everton has to sell me. To took some money, so big money. That's the reason I came back in in France. But I, when I arrived there, I I knew straight away because you know in Lance, the luck I had. It's in Lance. We've got a, in Lance. The fans are fantastic. It's the best fans in France. That's the reason it was was good. But after four five months, I knew I will come back in England because. The passion around the football, it's crazy in England, even in Italy, but because I didn't know Italy before, but in England it was crazy and I, I really wanted to come back. What did you first know about Leeds before you signed for the club and what can you remember about Leeds when you played for Everton? When I play, no, no, because they have a, no, they have a, how you say, the character team, no? Because I think I took great cards uh, on uh, Lee Boyer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I took red card on Lee. On Lee, on Lee. Uh, for me, it's it's um, maybe it was David Beckham, but Lee Boyer. Honestly, I, 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 you will never know, but I think against Valencia in the second leg, if he was on the pitch, you know, it was it, because uh, you with him, you, you never knew he could score. You know, when you, it's like. A, a little rat, he was everywhere. When you not <laughs> expect him, he was there. And, you know, and I, I really think he will have a bigger bigger career in national team because he was a he was a very, very good player and good guy. You were one of the few arrivals for Leeds at the beginning of that season, with the club signing Viduka for a reported £6.5 million from Celtic and defender Don Matteo from Liverpool for a reported £4.75 million. However, when you signed, you became Leeds' record signing. How did that make you feel? You can have some big pressure because my first game in uh, in uh, in champion my, my my game in Champions League, you know, it was the preliminary. I took red card. <laughs> 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 big pressure, but you know, we had so much. I loved this team because the the atmosphere in this team was unbelievable. I, I I I was lucky to play in big clubs to want things, but I never knew I never knew um atmosphere like that on the team. In you know in, in the team it was crazy. I remember like when we were to the Pullman, like when we used to to travel, everybody was singing was crazy it was the first time i see that and all the time we eat we, we used to go out together was a we used to play golf together it was together like five six seven players all the times we were together it was crazy in today's transfer market especially at leeds many of the transfer fees and figures are undisclosed and aren't released to the public however leeds and the chairman at the time peter ridgedale made your £7.2 million figure very public and 
when you arrived at Ellen Road, the unveiling consisted of like a large check that you were holding with the amount of money Leeds has spent and a shirt printed with decor with seven point two million pounds on the back. How did that make you feel and did it put you under any pressure to perform as the whole of the yeah. Leeds fan base was aware of your cost and your record transfer? Yeah, but it's always like that. You can see all the players when they arrive with a big uh, you know, in, in when you arrive with a big check in your back, sometimes it's difficult because it's uh, the pressure. You've got some big pressure. But honestly, I I always say that you know what is very important. It's what you're doing on the on the pitch. You know, like that. It's most important. After you can, they can pay you. They can do that. The truth is the pitch. You cannot lie in the pitch and. Uh, before to go to Leeds, I could go to to some big clubs in England. And when I choose Leeds, it was for a reason. And I never doubt about my quality. That's the reason I was excited. I was very happy. And uh, I knew we will do some things because I can. I, I I could feel it because before to come to to sign to Leeds, I I spoke with uh, Michael Bridges and. Uh, yeah, yeah, before to come on, I spoke with Michael Bridges and uh, I didn't know him, but he was so kind that I didn't, I didn't have any doubts on, and I cannot explain when you, when you know some things will be great, something great expects you. I don't know how to explain that. Whilst we're just about to begin talking to Olivia about his time at Leeds United, it will be a great time to promote our partner, Old School Leeds. Visit Old School Leeds on their Instagram page, at old underscore school underscore Leeds, or their website, www.oldschoolleedsco.com, for all your Dirty Leeds merchandise. They have brand new stock of Dirty Leeds shirts, jumpers, hats, and even stickers, so head over to their Instagram page or website to view all their new additions. You'll need to be quick though as all their stock does run out very fast. And as a result, Old School Leeds have released a discount code, FANZONE, you can use at checkout for 20% off your order. Check them out and help spread the Dirty Leeds name. The season before you joined Leeds, the club finished third in the Premier League, which on paper it might sound good, but in the end, it was 22 points behind the champions, Manchester United. And like Jack said, as well as your arrival at that season, Leeds has spent almost £20 million before the season had even started. Was manager David O'Leary targeting to win the Premier League that year? No, but he, he knew, you know, like, I think I'm not a manager, but I knew when you've got a great team, when you're finished third, uh, when you finish third with 20 points behind Manchester, but before this year, they went to semi-final of UEFA Cup was long time Leeds didn't go there and you you spend so much more uh, so much energy with the UEFA then you lose in you lose some points in uh, in the Premier League that's for sure because that's happened to us when I was in uh, in Lens it was exactly the same because you're so excited to play for the for the UEFA Cup and when you're coming to the 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 the, the, the league uh, it's not the same support, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, it's good you, you play, but not like when it's European Cup, it's crazy. And they learn, I think, the experience they had in UEFA Cup, many learn. That's the reason we went to semi-final of Champions League, because the year before, the club was in the semi-final of UEFA Cup, you know, like, it was a big step in front for them. When they spent this... I think when David spent this money, he wanted to build the team for the next four or five years. Because all of when we went, when we signed Mark, Dom, we signed four years, four or five years. Because we were, all of them, we wanted to stay long times. Leeds' Premier League form started fairly decent, losing just three times in the first 12 matches. However, during that period, Leeds recorded two 4-3 wins at Ellen Road, the first against Tottenham at the end of September, and the second remains one of the all-time classic Leeds games, when Mark Viduka scored all four goals against Liverpool, 
What can you remember about that Liverpool match and what was it like to play in such a dramatic match? Yeah, but because I think this game will uh, will stay, you know, on the memory of the people. Because what what was important, it was the what was important. It, it was you know the the character on the team. And Mark, Mark was crazy. <laughs> Mark was strong. Was technically technically, he was. I don't know if people knew that. On it's not a secret, but the first year, the first year. Uh, uh, AC Milan wanted to sign Mark Di Luca. You know, yeah. after the the Champions League, they wanted absolutely to sign him. You know, because it, it was it, it was like it's a big man with a beautiful foot. It was good. Although at that stage of the season, Leeds's title charge seemed to be on. Between the cramped festive period between the second half of November and the start of January, you lost five out of seven matches. What do you think was the reasoning for the dip in form? And do you think that this ended Leeds' title hopes, as previous league winners have not lost many more than five matches throughout the whole season? Yeah, but it's what I said before. Champions League, the Champions League put you, took you so much energy. You spend so much energy with Champions League. You're so, it's nervous. You know, even yeah. if you want to give everything to the league, it's not the same. You're, uh, sometimes you feel uh, empty. As well as, uh, as well as the Premier League, of course, Leeds were competing in the Champions League, like you said. And after successfully overcoming 1860 Munich in the qualifying round, the side progressed into the group stages of the competition and were put into a group consisted of Barcelona, AC Milan and Besiktas with only two of the four sides able to progress. Did you feel that Leeds might struggle to progress out of that group with the European giants in Barcelona and Milan fighting for the two spots? Yeah, for sure. Because when you start your first game, you go to Barcelona and you took four goals. <laughs> Do not expect... You, you, you start to say, ah, we will need a miracle to go, to go through. And that was crazy because we learned. When we went to these games 4-0, I remember the new camp was so big, so big. And after <laughs> it's it's football, you know, like we learn, you know, we we learn. And after, uh, you know, when we play against Madrid at Madrid, it was not the same because I think it we lost 3-2, but we should win because the ref, we should like we had the the, the great games against them and. Uh, if the referee not uh, gives the, the goals to Raul with the hands, you know, you never know in football, but it was a team like Barcelona, Milan, you learn a lot because you play against the best player in the world. Yeah, nevertheless, playing against teams like that, Leeds lost just one of the six matches in that group stage, beating Besiktas 6-0 and a late Libor winner, securing a 1-0 win over AC Milan at Ellen Road as well as drawing with Barcelona, Ellen Road, and coming within seconds of all three points. And the progression out of the group stage was confirmed at the San Siro after Don Matteo's famous header secured a point. What can you remember about that night in Milan? Yeah, what I remember, I remember after, after, after the games, like with, you know, the communion in between uh, the, the fans and the player on the pitch was, was beautiful. I remember not the games in particular, no, because yeah, it was funny to see Dom Matteo, the Italian Dominic Matteo, score. I think it was this first goal, and it was a very important goal. But it's after the I remember after the games, you know, the combin. For me, it was it was beautiful. I never saw that before. And as Leeds progressed through the stages of the Champions League, the Premier League form also improved, and Leeds won 13 out of the final 17 matches of the season, including a 2-1 win at Anfield to complete a double over Liverpool, a 2-0 win against Chelsea at Ellen Road, and a 6-1 drumming of neighbours Bradford City. Do you think Leeds' Champions League form helped the side gain momentum in the Premier League for the second half of the season? Yeah, for sure, because it's like, it's uh, insurance. You feel big, you know, when you start to beat some big team, you know, you know, you can do it. But to become big players, you have to do it every, every week in, week out. 
you have to do it always. That's the reason. It's difficult to be a big team because everybody expects you. Everybody wants to beat you. And you have to, to, to be always to to hundred percent because you know if not it can it could be a problem. Yeah, and in the end, Leeds finished fourth in the league. Do you think that fourth was an underachievement? Yeah, but we, we, we with what we did in uh, in uh, in Champions League, for sure we we let so many points because I say that it's uh, if we had only the league, maybe we would be on the top two. But with the Champions League, sometimes we lose you lose weight. Like you will draw, you will lose the games. I remember we we lost against West Ham at uh, at home, and uh, we had the eight seventy five or eighty percent of the ball, and they have just one shoot, they score, and that this the type of game, like you lose three points against West Ham, and and usually and with the team we had it was. It was uh, normally should be uh, easier, but you play in Champions League, you play, you're tired, and if you're not just for one occasion, that it's football. Uh, you remember in 2010, Switzerland beat Spain 1 0, and Spain won the World Cup. It's football. Yeah. And although some fans might have seen that Premier League finish as a Underachievement. The same couldn't be said about the club's form in the Champions League, and Leeds reached the semi-final of the competition for the first time since the Don Revy era, and faced a two-legged tie with Valencia. After the first leg at Ellen Road finished nil-nil, Leeds travelled to the Messiah knowing that they had the advantage if they were to score an away goal. However, Valencia came out three-nil winners. What can you remember about that match, and how disappointing was it to be knocked out of the competition after such a good run? Yeah, because you know when we nul nul is it's not a bad result, you know nul nul at at the first leg. But in the second leg, we had some some good chances in the first half, and we didn't score. And and after it's football. But I said before at the beginning, the Boyer was not on the, you know he could score, but it's football, you know like and. Uh, it will be, uh, you know, like uh, a regret because uh, a remorse because we could do much better. But it's football, you know. Like, and I think Valencia was was in. Uh, they went to two times on the road. They went to the final of Champions League. They had more experience than us, and uh, they deserve to 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 win to to win against us. But it's football. The following season, Leeds were once again within a shot of winning the Premier League title and the side spent around another £20 million pounds beginning of the season on Robbie Fowler and Seth Johnson. Did the club's targets for the, that 2001-2002 season differ from the previous season's ambitions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to, Robbie was crazy. Seth arrived, he was a young player. But, you know, many things changed because when... It was like, it was, uh, I don't remember. Uh, David O'Leary went in 2002 or uh, 2003. Uh. This was when David O'Leary was still the manager, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because he had some, he, he, he knew we could do some things. Because with this team, with this character, we could do some things. He knew. And when you put, when you, Robbie Fowler in front of the goal was unbelievable. It was crazy. Oh, I think it's one of the best Best I saw right foot, left foot. You, you you didn't know. It was crazy. You know, you can feel even because now we speak about Robbie Fowler, but Robbie Keane was there too. You had some some great, great, uh, you know, great players on the squad. Not only 11 players. We had 20 players. For me, I had one player. It's Stephen McPhail. It was unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> But you know, like in Leeds was difficult for him, but he was so good. But I can, I can, I can name many players. We were lucky to have a strong squad. Like Woody, Woody was crazy. Rio, Gary Kelly, Danny Mitz, Eric Bakker, David Betty was 
somebody. Like, oh, it was very tough. And that's the reason it's always difficult to say uh, some names. Harry Kewell was, yeah. Even some players didn't play too much, but they bring some good energy, like Jason Wilcox. Michael Dubery was funny. And, you know, in the team was not an, what was important, it was not about the 11, the starting 11. But it was about the 20 players. Leeds continued their amazing form of the previous season and lost just twice between the first match of the season against Southampton and the 1st of January, meaning that Leeds had lost just four times in a calendar year of 2001 in the Premier League and picked up halfway through the season in January. Did you feel that Leeds had a better chance of winning the league compared to the January before? Yeah, but you expect always when you when. When you you expect always some things, you don't want to say it, but at the beginning of the season, a football player want, wants to win everything. It's easier where you play for a big team. It's easier to go to win things. You know you will you will win some things, but at the end you always play to win trophies because at the end of your career. You just check, you just uh, look what you win before. What you win, you know, and that it's important. And we wanted to absolutely to win some things. It's a little bit of regret to didn't win anything with this big team. Like you said, we didn't end up winning the competition. And uh, Leeds got knocked out by PSV Eindhoven, who snatched a 90th minute winner at Ellen Road to not Leeds out of the competition. Did you feel that Leeds should have progressed further in the competition that year? Yeah, it was, you know, like, because I think this year, the main problem, some things happen, you know, during this year, because we have a trial, the trial of, I remember, I think it's that, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my memory, in my memory, the trial starts, Lee Boyer, John, uh, Woody, and Michael Dubery. And yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. yeah, and that was very bad for us. Because you can see, even, you know, the can see the relation in between us was a little bit strange. In between, You cannot be concentrated on football when maybe in your head you, you will have to go to jail. It's crazy. And I think that's... That um, that that was very bad for us because I'm if we didn't have this trial in between, maybe we will go through. But the trial killed us. At around that time in 2001, as well as Leeds playing for Leeds, of course, you made your first appearance for the French national side, and your debut yeah. came against South Korea in the Confederations Cup. Do you yeah. remember getting the call to be asked to represent France and how did it feel playing for your yeah, country? But, yeah, but I was ex expect this call uh, years before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was expect this call before, but you know, like, because, you know, with what we did in Champions League, like the, 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 the people in France, they wanted to see me on the list. They said, yeah, it's how it's possible because my name was before to come to Leeds, but they, they were talking about me in national team. But when you not do th big things in Europe, it's a little bit uh, difficult because to, like in my terms, to go in national team, to, you, it was important to play abroad, not to play in France because all the players was playing in broad at my time. That's the reason for me, I, when I said I wanted to come back straight away to England, because I knew I will have more chance to, to, to go to the national team. And as well, France won that Confederations Cup in yeah. Portugal, and you played alongside some of French, France's all-time greats, such as Patrick Vieira, Robert Perez, Desailly, Nicolas Anelka. What was it like to play in such a strong side, as well, of course, win the tournament? Yeah, it was... Uh... You know, I play with some big player in my, my club, some some good player, big player in my club. That's the reason when you're coming to national team, I I know them since I'm young because we used to play uh, under uh, under 21. We we did Olymp 
Olympic in Atlanta together. And most of the many players in national team used to play with me. I, I used to play with them in national in uh, in young uh, in young French team. That's the, for me. It was just a it was just a conclusion. Although you were having great success with the French national team at Leeds, the form began to drop during the second half of the season after a great start. In January 2002, Leeds were top of the Premier League. However, a run at the start of the year which saw Leeds win one match in nine games toppled them off top spot. Do you think that blips like that costed Leeds a league that year? Yeah, for sure. The trial, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, for sure, because the relationship the relation was a little bit, you know, it's difficult to... When, when you play football, you have to be right in your, uh, in your head. If you're not right in your head, you cannot be right in your body, you know, like, mm. and you cannot think about 100% of football. It was so, even in between, the atmosphere was a little bit uh, strange, not like before. But uh, yeah, it's, it's football, but uh, Manchester was, uh, Manchester has a strong squad, uh, Arsenal too, and uh, like we beat Arsenal, and uh, we knew we can we we could beat Manchester. We knew we can we could beat Arsenal. We, we didn't uh, fear anybody. And Leeds went on to finish fifth that season, and failed to qualify for the Champions League for the second season in a row, which ultimately cost manager at the time David O'Leary his job, and was later sacked that season. How did you find David O'Leary as a manager, and did you think it was the correct choice by Chairman Peter Risdale to appoint a new manager at the end of the season? Yeah, but for me, I, I, I came because it was David O'Leary. He was the manager. I spoke with him with, before to come. And uh, with, uh, what, what is the name? It was the, the uh, anyway. I, I, when I signed, it was David O'Leary, the coach. He wanted to make me sign. I used to have a, a, a very good relationship with him. And for me, I could, I could leave before. And I stayed because David O'Leary was was uh, was the coach, and I knew with how he used to how with this team how he used to manage the group and everything. I was sure we will do some things. And if you start to to sack the manager, he bring me. It's it's you start to think about oh it's even if it's football, but sometimes. You know, in any job, you can have somebody in your job you love, you like, and another comes and you don't have any feeling. And when I said before about the chairman of Lance, when I signed, it was because it was a, a relation. I love the relationship. If I don't have a relationship, for me, it's difficult. And I had a great relationship with uh, with David O'Leary. And I think it, it was... a uh, it was great for this team. Terry Venables was O'Leary's replacement, who had previously brought success to both Tottenham and Barcelona. Who? <laughs> 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 and he, he guided England to Euro 96. Sorry. At, at the time, did you feel that he was a good appointment for the club? Yeah, I don't know, because it's, he came, you know, like... And all the manager... When they're coming to the clubs, they want to bring their players. And uh, they always wanted to have, you know, you want to change things. When you're coming to some clubs, you've got some manager. When they're coming, they want to buy their players. And uh, on what is, was the truth, it's before to, to sack um, David O'Leary, I could sign for Juve. And I didn't go because because uh, it was like that. I, and I didn't go. And, and I knew Terry Venables didn't want me. And when you know somebody he, he doesn't he, he doesn't want you, what you doing? You not stay because he wanted to buy with the money when they will sell me with the money they will take. He will buy these players. But I'm I'm not. Uh, I was not. I, honestly, I don't. I, I for me it was not important. The best impo the best things to me it was to play on the pitch. And I, when he put me against Man we won uh, against Manchester. I was on the field, and I was man of the match. I don't care about 
what you can feel about me. Me, I just wanted at this time, I just wanted to be uh, treated like everybody, you know, not like uh, I want to, to have the same chance, even if you don't like me, but you have to judge me on the pitch. If I'm good, you make me play. If I'm not good, okay, you can change me. And when he arrived, when he arrived, Terry Benebers, he put me straight away on the bench. And that was not correct. Because of Leeds' failure to qualify for the Champions League in the previous season, Leeds suffered quite heavy debt financially and were forced to sell some of their most expensive players, such as Rio Ferdinand, who had arrived less than two years before for £18 million, which was a club record fee as well as a world record fee for defender as well as Robbie Keane, who was sold to Tottenham. At the time, it was obvious that Leeds weren't going to be as competitive on the pitch. However, did you think that the departures would affect the side so much? Yeah, for sure, because all we are players, we wanted to win. And when you start to see, you know, the club like Vesak, David O'Leary, it's uh, bad news. And after they start to, to, to sell all the, the, the Robbie Keane, Rio Ferdinand, Harry Kewell left all the, 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 the good players. You can see some good players left. You said, oh, it will be a nightmare. It's, it's, it's football, it's, um, it's collective, but after you, you think about yourself. And if somebody said, yeah, we will buy that, we will buy this Rio Ferdinand, we will start to, do, to, to, to try to win the, the league, to try to, to have a qualification in Europe, and you... One year later, you see every some some good players start to leave. They lie. It's true what we, what they say, and you start to think about yourself. You say, "Oh, I want uh, because the f- football ca- career the, it's 10, 10, 15 years, and you don't you don't want to lose time. And that's the reason when I see uh, when I see all the players left, and after the manager used to put me on the bench, I said, "Oh, okay, fair enough. I will find." I will find a good solution to live, and that's and because the truth, because I didn't want, I didn't know because Terry Venables didn't make me play. And after I said, okay, I will go to on loan somewhere else. You never know because I said to him, I had five, four years left in my contract when I went to Rome. It showed, and I said in Rome, I said I come on loan because if I didn't like. I will come back to Leeds and maybe, uh, I said, maybe the coach won't be there anymore and it would be good for me. That's the reason I went on loan. <laughs> but <laughs> but at the end, because Fabio Capello wanted to have me and for me was a, a very good, uh, I said the relationship is important and when the, a coach like Capello said to you, yeah, I would like to have you in my team. Uh, it's uh, I didn't play for, I was in jail. And I didn't play for three when I was uh, two months when I was in Leeds. And when I came back, uh, when I came to, to Rome, I had one training. I didn't play for three months and Capello made me play yeah. straight away. And that was a, a good thing for me. In, in January, when you did leave the club to go to Roma on loan, Terry Venables yeah. said some very public comments about your move away, saying that he would, he would drive me he would drive. the club. Exactly. Why yeah. do you think he said them comments in the way he did, and how did it make you feel? No, no, because he wanted to, like, to say the look, uh, to to say to the fans, I didn't, I, I don't want to leave. I uh, I want uh, it's him. He wants to go to Italy. I will drive him, but it's that it's false. And I said I was expecting he drive me. He didn't drive me. <laughs> <laughs> but, That'd be a long but drive. That, that was just that it was just you know the comments like that the fans won't say it's your fault i will take the responsibility because i want because i uh, i uh, i live myself but at the the first thing is he didn't want to have me in this team that's the reason that is the point it's not because uh, because i wanted to. yeah if somebody don't want you in this team what you will do? You will stay? No, because I know I had the qualities, especially a, a club like Rome. It was reported that your loan to Roma was going to be until the end of the season, with a possibility that you may return to Leeds at the end of the season. Was that ever the case? 
especially as Terry Venables had left the club at the time, you, your loan had come to an end. Yeah, but because after Roms didn't want to leave me, uh, to uh, to leave me, and they they decide to buy me, and because I had uh, you know I had uh, uh, for for uh, you know uh, for Rainer, in five months I uh, they were very very happy, and uh, because I had a, a huge relationships with uh, Fabio Capello. And I said this morning, I said how was important to have a good relationship with the with the manager for me. That's the reason I decided to stay with Capello. And like you mentioned, uh, you did end up making a permanent move over to Italy, leaving Leeds United. Did did you feel that the permanent move away from the club was your only option at the time because Leeds were destined for relegation and was in the process of selling many other of the best players such as Lee Bowyer and Jonathan Woodgate. Yeah, but it's yeah, but it's it's like uh, for me it was difficult because it was the end of something great, and um, I think they, maybe they made some mistake. But you know, when you lose so great play, you lose nine nine players from you know the the start eleven. It's difficult to rebuild the not the team. You can rebuild the team, but it rebuild the atmosphere we had on the team. And it was more that I was missing more that this atmosphere than you know because we know when we used to go to the pitch we know we can beat anybody and and I said before you know with the try the try they broke something hmm. in the team. Yeah, and although you first moved to Italy with Roma, you moved to Inter Milan three years later, where you won back-to-back -back Serie A titles in 2007 and 2008 in a side which included your former teammate Patrick Vieira, as well as Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Luis Figo, Hernan Crespo, Cambiasso, Zanetti, Cesar. I could go on. Basically, a squad of world-class players. What was it like to play in that team? Yeah, but when I was in Rome, when I came from Leeds, uh, when I just came in training, on the you know the starting eleven, you had Cafu, Aldair, uh, Batistuta, Totti, Del Vecchio, Emerson. It was crazy, you know. The squad was crazy, world class player. But and when I changed Rome, because after you used to play with world class player. And when I went to to Inter, uh, because I could go to, I could sign for uh, Juve and for uh, Milan, but you know because Inter didn't didn't win the the league. Um, maybe the last the last time they won the league it was uh, 17 years ago, 17 17 years, and I just wanted to to make story, you know, just arrive and try to win the first the, the, the first league for so much time. And uh, we won it. We won, uh, I think, the club. We won three. With this team, we won three titles. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2000. The, the team, went, after I left, but the team won the 2010. They won the league. They won the Champions League. And... I have to say some things. I thought Leeds will be the same because we know this team will win some things. Like in 2006, uh, when I came, the, the 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 squad was so impressed, so crazy, and the the team had had the desire to win. And uh, and if they won in 2010, because they they built something. You know, at the beginning of 2006. Yeah. <clears throat> and as well as them legends on the pitch, like I mentioned, the side was managed by Roberto Mancini for your first two seasons and Jose Mourinho in your final season at Inter. And yeah. although Jose didn't feature you much as Mancini, how was he as a manager? He's obviously renowned for being one of the best in the world. Yeah, but it's, it's always, I think, uh, Mourinho is an unbelievable manager. You know, when... Because I had that, I know, I know how is in life. I said, I mentioned that before. You can have a manager, he will love you, he will like you, 
and you can have a manager when he will uh, when he will you 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 will have not uh, not you know the feeling you had before and for me it's so much important because i know i'm not easy i'm not i'm in, i'm not easy to manage but uh, it's life i uh, i have got a big personality and for any but before I think before to be a football player, I am a man, and if somebody not respect me, we can have some problem, and that's the reason. And when I had some problem with manager, because they they didn't respect me. But Mourinho in training, I it, even the difference I have to say the difference in between Terry Venables and Mourinho. It's I knew straight away Mourinho tell me. He, he doesn't want me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he said that to me in my face. And I said, yeah, but you can show him in training. I show him I can play in this team and he make me play. And he, in training, I, I travel with the team sometimes. And uh, even I knew I will never play for the, I will never be on the, you know, in the first eleven starting 11 but i was very very happy to go to training with him because i learned like a manager i learned a lot he is it's not the case if you want every if you want everything with 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 all this team because he's he's good and i respect you know i respect the manager i respect the manager even if i had some problem with the the men because we had a relationship. We don't have any relationship, but the manager is unbelievable. He's, he's the number. That's the reason they said he was the special one, but it's true. If Leeds are semi-final Champions League side, which included obviously yourself, Lucas Radebe, Matt Viduka, and the rest of the side, played yeah. against that 2007-2008 Inter side, which you're also oh. part of, who do you think would win? Uh, Inter. I think the 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 in squad it was you know when I came, just you know the just the striker. It's like we had uh, Ibrahimovic, Adriano, mm. Crespo, Cruz, Recoba, Figo, Solari. Just uh, you, you know, it's some some player won the Champions League. You know, you had the uh, quality, experience, everything was there. You know, most of the players had 30. 30 years, you know, it was like uh, all, all, all squad. I think we had maybe two. Or Balotelli came two years after, but we had only player had uh, more than 25 years. Yeah. It was the difference. Maybe we missed that because in uh, when I was in Leeds, we had only David Bet, David Batty, mm -hmm. Nigel, and uh, and Chief. If not, not uh, many players with so much experience. But Inter mm -hmm. was was crazy. If you ask me what is the best, my best, I would say for the for the spirit on the team, leads leads far, 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 far away. This second section of the show is sponsored by the Harrogate CBD Company. Harrogate CBD Company are a local business run by Leeds United fans, and they're on a mission to help people sleep better and relax during lockdown. They source the finest CBD products so you don't have to look any further when looking for anxiety relief or a helping hand when struggling to sleep. Research has shown that CBD can help refresh your mindset, increase your focus to reduce anxiety, and their oils contain pure hemp, organic ingredients, and less than 0.2% THC content. If you want to find out more about their products, visit them on www.hgcbd.co.uk or on Instagram at Harrogate underscore CBD and add the discount code LUFC to receive 5% off all their sprays and oils. In this section, our followers get to ask their questions to our guests by commenting on our LUFC fan zone Instagram post. Each episode, we select four questions which are commented and put them forward to our guest. This week's first question comes from Connor, who asks, Hi guys, hi Olivier. During your term at Leeds, you partnered David Bayer in the middle of midfield. What was it like to play with him and did it influence anything about your performance? Cheers. Yeah, Bats was, you know, 
we didn't talk too much, I have to admit, but I love the character of I love because when you when you give him the ball, he never lose the ball. He was simple, but he not lose the ball, and he he can he could he can kill you without any anesthesia. You know, he was he was very young, and uh, I start to know him at the end of the because in the summer I think just before I leave, when I was in J, he was in J two, and we start to talk a little little bit more because Bats was more older than us, but he's yeah a quality player. Wow. Yeah, but tell me some. What what is what he doing? But now, after football, what did he do? Uh, he he isn't doing much actually. Really, do much public stuff. He was seen on a uh, a video, you know, clapping for the uh, NHS. He was seen on one of them. But other than that, nobody's really heard from him. Yeah, that's it's a shame because he could uh, he could he could bring this experience to the young young lads. Yeah, yeah that is because. Because it's from Leeds, he's uh, it's from Yorkshire, and he could help the club to to become more bigger. Do you think he would have made a good coach? Like, yeah, not about the good coach, but sometimes like Eddie Gray used to do. Mm. But you need to have some experience. No, the you know even for the young kids from the academy to to know you know like uh, the 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 player made the story of the club. Yeah. It's important. Our second question comes from Lee, who asks... Hi, guys. Uh, my question is, which is the best player you've ever played with? Yeah, Zidane. Zidane was crazy. Zidane, I, I used to say, we are not doing the same job. It's crazy. Yeah, Zidane. Yeah, Zidane was crazy. Yeah, Z I would say Zidane, but Ibrahimovic was not bad too. Ibrahimovic... <laughs> Oh, it was crazy, yeah. Next up, Emma asks. Hi guys, hi Olivia. My question is, what is your most memorable moment in a Leeds United shirt? Thank you. My best moment? When we beat La Coronia. The Cotties are... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the, the free kick of Jan Arte. Crazy. And lastly, Martin, who follows Leeds all the way from Scandinavia. Hey guys, hey Oliver. My question is, do you have any regrets during your time at Leeds? Yeah, I said that before. It's to have won nothing. That's it's it's yeah. That it's it's real pity with the the quality young team we had. We should win like we should win some things, you know. I foot the regrets. It's they brought this team. In just in one year, on on one on nearly two years, they broke this team. They built, and that it's a uh, that's pity. I have to say. One last thing from me, Olivia, if that's all right. How do you think Leeds will do if we do get promoted this season? How do you think they'll perform in the Premier League? Yeah, but uh, it's like it's always the same. To go to the the third division to the second division, you need some players. To go to the second division to first, you need some players. Not necessarily a lot of players, but you need to additionate some players. Because it can be very difficult. It, it can be difficult, but um, I think if you put some three or four players, experience, because the first, the Premier League is a little bit tough and you need to have some experienced players. Uh, they can do well, but they cannot arrive and change everything. It will be a, uh, it will, it won't be, it won't be good. You have to to keep, you know, the spirit on this team. You know, go yeah. to promoted and additional at the, at least at the at the beginning, you have to keep the spirit. And that ends today's episode. Thank you to everyone for sending your questions, and thank you so much for your time, Olivia. Yeah, thank you to you and. Uh, all the best for everything for you. Take care. We'll be back in two weeks Same. with our next guest, but who will you choose? Stay yeah. tuned for the upcoming vote okay. on our LUFC fanzone Instagram story later this week. Thanks for listening.